My name is uh, Koliwana Evason and I will be your host. There will be a possibility to ask questions. Uh, you can do it uh, along the webinar uh, using the chat function that you find in the WebEx control bar. And um, we are recording this webinar uh, for uh, making it available uh, to, to others to view uh, offline later on. And there will be basically two sections in today's uh, webinar. There will be a very brief introduction and that I have started and then we will do a hands-on demonstration on how to set up plots in uh, different ways and control how the plots looks. We will not cover all aspects but we will cover a lot and, and uh, of the base, all the basic uh, settings that you can do to a plot. First, a brief introduction to ClueCore. Um, you are using a software that is built on visualization, uh, always uh, providing you with plots and, and visualizations of your data, making it easier, faster, and um, more accessible um, with a purpose of enabling uh, broad user groups to uh, work with data analysis. ClueCore has been around uh, for more than 10 years now. Uh, we have released more than 10 product, major product releases. And one of the major efforts the last years here have been to add a new product line that we are starting with called ClueCore Diagnostics, um, which uh, will enable in, in these first versions uh, cancer diagnostics in uh, leukemia and not then in a research setting but in a clinical setting. We are still in early phases there working with a number of, of partners. Uh, we have also today uh, uh, shipped a maintenance release of ClueCore uh, Omics Explorer version 3.6 so if you are users uh, already now and have the product uh, program installed, I would recommend to go to gluco.com later today or tomorrow and, and uh, download the latest version. There are a number of improvements, but there are also uh, bug fixes. So uh, always good to get the latest. We are always very happy with uh, to see what our clients are um, producing and doing and we, we try to capture all that information. So going towards uh, 700 publications right now and you can always go to kluko.com and, and look at the reference page uh, to see what the latest ones are uh, in good uh, journals uh, overall, which uh, of course is impressive work by all of you. For you who are new to ClueCore, um, you can use ClueCore in a number of different ways. Uh, if, for, if you start with a new data set, it is uh, very wise to normally inspect it, visualize it and explore it to find what artifacts you have, potentially identify structures and, and start, if that's the case, generate new hypotheses. If you're the NGS space um, with, with the data along the genome, then you might just want to browse and filter and check quality. Then you move into more in-depth analysis. Um, we have then a rich statistical framework. There is also an extension uh, with an open API to R. Um, what we also now added actually in the la latest maintenance release is a way to import and export files uh, to R from within the program. So you can do some of your work in, in ClueCore and some if, uh, in R if you're a uh, or advanced user. You have variant calling, you have survival analysis, and of course, all the plot types that we will um, show you today and, and how you can configure them. There are uh, several ways to combine your results, your experiment with additional information, gene set enrichment, annotation, geo browser, download from TCGA, um, and, and so on. 
then we have a quite powerful machine learning uh, module, um, build classifiers and, and use them uh, in, in different ways. What type of data can you work with? Yeah, more or less all types of data. Um, if you can put it in a matrix of numbers or if it's NGS data. And an experiment is not only the measured data, it's also the annotations, equally important to get them in. And we have several ways to support you with that, either in strict file formats or uh, using a um, annotation wizard that picks out uh, the um, sections of a file that you need. Uh, and if you haven't used it before, we also have the templates, uh, which is a flexible way of scripting the program in Python, where there are already made templates uh, with, um, for instance, now import from for protein data. You can also import data uh, from uh, single cell data experiments uh, with those templates. And the templates also work as starting point for the analysis to kickstart you and, and to speed up setting up uh, basic stuff in, in, in the program. Uh, before we, we start the live demonstration here, I would like to see if I can just move a couple of things on my screen here. Um, and as you know, uh, we it, it is uh, troublesome sometimes around the world um, with COVID-19 and we have um, transferred all our ongoing, uh, normal ongoing training sessions and, and webinars to the web, of course. Uh, and if you go to klukor.com and uh, look, um, there is a new section here on the front page and you can click that and hopefully it works here. Um, anyway, it, it seems slow, um, but what you will find there is, uh, yeah, here it comes, uh, a more extensive list of trainings and webinars, uh, the one that we are actually looking at right now, and then also basic hands-on training for, that is longer training uh, sessions that you can join um, uh, over the web, where you actually will do work by yourself, so, so not, not uh, a webinar in tra traditional way, and there are number of different sessions to select from. So take this possibility, use it, get you get more up to speed, learn more about the program, uh, maybe a very good time to do that where, when you are potentially working from uh, home or some other place. Okay, let's go and have a look at the plots here. So I have started the program and um, I will um, work with um, one of the data sets that comes with the program. So the acute lymphoblastic leukemia data set and, and for the purpose of this demonstration today, it doesn't really matter what type of data it is. But uh, as you see here, it's 132 samples and, and 13,000 variables, you see that down here to the left. The first plot you get is the PCA plot, and there are two ways uh, of um, configuring a plot. Um, either uh, we just look at the visual uh, parts, and uh, that is basically um, controlled from the view tab over here with details in the plot settings dialog, which we will work with. But before we go into that, uh, let's have a look at the sample annotations, because that's another way of configuring a plot, which is worth mentioning. So here you have the information about the sample annotations, and here is then the color legend, which shows you um, the different groups, uh, annotation groups in this uh, annotation. So if we now 
say that we we don't really like the colors we have. Uh, that could be an important way of configuring things. So the way to, to configure a sample annotation and the colors is just to uh, double click on the color square here. And let's say that we would like to have a slightly different way uh, type of colors here. So we will select that one we can keep not so clear colors we select from this row instead uh, and then or maybe that one yeah. so This is, of course, uh, according to your liking uh, and your selection, what you would like to see. Uh, just to um, demonstrate it, I will just bring up a variance filter here so that we can filter a little bit on, on the different groups here. So we see, so now we have new colors. Do I then have to redo this coloring the next time? No, uh, if I now save my data set or, or actually, if I, I can show you it in a slightly different way. If I now try to close uh, this data set, I will get a warning. It, it will say unsaved changes detected. The data set has been modified. We haven't really done any calcul uh, calculation, so it's not modified in that sense. So the, the modification here is that the colors has been changed. So, and then I shouldn't have pressed this card. <laughs> uh, but le le let's uh, redo that quickly. Um, and I had collapsed my data set here to GNC. But that, this, this is the challenge with doing live demonstrations. On the other hand, the good thing with Clucor is that it is uh, fast. So something like that. I can change one more color maybe. And we are, we are back where I can demonstrate what I wanted to do. Um, so what I do now when I save uh, a data set, I just press save as. Uh, um, or export it in, in this case. Um, Uh, I take my desktop here. Uh, oh, and I press there. Then we will we, we'll see here uh, where it put it uh, there. And so I have my webinar G data there. And then I, I can, if I would like to also save my colors, uh, I go export and export what is called a supplementary data. And then I select my desktop again. And as you can see, it's already there. I just didn't find it. So you can see I have my webinar G sub file. So when you move a data set in Clucor, a G data file, you should make sure that you also move um, the, the G sub file. So, so file, uh, recent data file. Um, here. And if you now see, I have my leukemia subtypes and the same coloring as I, after my changes. So I will always get the GSUP file saved. Or if I would like to have it in a different place, or I also have the option to export it 
separately. So that's good. That is where we keep track of the colors for sample annotations. So, we, if you can click on uh, something in the plot, which is maybe a sample or, or uh, an axis or a label on the axis, uh, you will drive uh, the opening of the plot settings dialog. So, uh, this is fairly new from uh, some of the latest versions of the program where we actually opened that automatically before you had to, to press uh, the button up here. And then there is a lot of different options and we will work through uh, quite many of them today, but so we will just start. Maybe you like dark mode. Uh, so this is one way of... of uh, Changing your plots, so then you have a different setup. Um, can be nice sometimes. So we are back. Then there are very straightforward and, and the easiest way to remember this is, of course, to just test, you will not destroy anything. Size of the spheres can also be reached directly from here. So and the scale, which is if you're going to have a 3D perspective or it's going to be more flat. So th those are a number of the settings here. Um, you, you can change fonts, and so on. There's also um, a new uh, reset button here. So if you would like to have the defaults uh, restored on all your plot settings so that they go back to what we have as the base uh, for all your plots, you can just press here. Now I will like that and mention the very useful synchronized plots. So what I did now was that I, I right clicked and selected new synchronized plot and then I, I, I did tile. Uh, you can do the same things with going to the window menu up here, select new synchronized plot and select tile. So then you get same data with the same statistical filtering applied, um, but with the option to have different colorings. So my left plot, my right plot, sorry, is colored according to this leukemia subtype, and my right plot, uh, my left plot is now uh, colored according to uh, solid color which you can see up here in the view tab. Uh, and if I change that, yeah, we obviously change that. If I change here, so I take instead uh, in CCR, still the same data, but colored in, in uh, different ways. And, and can be very useful to just inspect your data and say, okay, that group that I know uh, is the, what is called, uh, in this case, the ALL group. I can see that, yeah, the NCCR, the, that is also sort of evenly distributed, uh, the both uh, zero and ones in that group. So instantly I, I get the feeling for that, that, that will at least not um, drive that condition, for instance, as an example of, of the analysis you can do by just looking at the plot. And this also shows uh, the duality in, in the sense that you can control coloring here, but you get the information about the coloring here. So now you see before it was solid, but now I have the option for colored by the uh, annotation in CCC. 
the R. So uh, if I now change to this plot, you will see that this changes to leukemia subtype. And the content of the view tab changes uh, with the selected plot and the content will also change uh, based on the plot type. If I now really would like to change plot type, which we haven't done, I will do that by method tab and then select it here. And again, maybe you have seen it, but it is also fairly new functionality. The all button here, where we list all the different um, plot types that we have, and we go to a PCA variable plot. And then if we look at the view tab, then you will see that I have then the variable coloring here that is solid now, and then I have more options. And then if I go here, then I will have the sample. So they, they change. Um, so let's color to something more interesting, standard deviation. And then you see also the scale here in, it goes from low values up to high. And if I, then take my statistics. You will see how it changes. Uh, now, now a lot of these are very uh, red here. So, so they, they are similar color because they are more or less in that part of the scale. Um, but if you would like to change that, we go here and we maybe select the colorblind mode, and then you get a different scale on your variable uh, standard deviation. And a lot of the standard deviation is there, but we can go back to default uh, or the one that we had like that. You can color all variables like this through the different settings here. So you can color by our R2 statistics uh, if you have done a multi-group ANOVA uh, or, or a t-test, uh, Q value, you can color by fold change, and you can also color based on uh, the expression level for one or more samples. So let's say that we are doing a statistical test here just quickly. And I would like to know the expression pattern for, for that specific sample. Then I can use my color button here. Then I come to the mouse tool. I make sure that I select that one first. That is the one that I would like to color. But then I do my selection in this plot. Then you see how the pattern here changes and, and you get the information, okay, these are red up regulated for that specific sample, and these are down-regulated for that specific sample. And again, if we now go here and look, you will see that that option here is selected. Uh, you know, I, I have colored that. Um, let's see, yeah, I think that very quickly moves us to uh, a heat map. I can select it here. And make sure that you can see it. The heat map is a fairly complex plot um, in the sense that there are very many options on how you can display your data. So let me then again start with the view tab. And you, then you see that uh, there are some different controls here compared to the PCA plot. Good starting point is the size uh, box because it controls the size of each individual uh, square uh, which represents a data point. And you know we have the samples as columns and we have the variables as rows. I press Auto, then it will give me a setup that shows all, everything, tries to show everything in the screen. And then you see that you get eight pixels uh, in 
for, for each square in um, this direction. Um, if I press out to here, um, you will see I have 1332, which basically will give me something not that useful because <clears throat> I don't have a, a thousand pixels even, so it will not be one pixel for each row. So to, to have a better thing here, we can filter down potentially a little bit. But then still we might be interested in looking at uh, our whole um, uh, heat map and then my recommendation is that you uh, basically scale up here make sure that you have maybe 14 pixels uh, in each direction or, or what fits on your screen um, then to be able to display that we have the scroll bars so then you have to scroll uh, instead so yeah the plot is bigger than your screen and then you have to scroll then there are the heat map is made up of several sub blocks, so you, you can also move how much you see um, in, in different ways as that, so that you can control how much space that should be available for the annotations, um, the, uh, the label annotations where you have here and here. So. Here you have the gene symbols, you find that here, so you can select others, so entre gene or, or, or gene symbol. And here you have the subgroups uh, in, in this annotation that I was working with, uh, leukemia. No, sorry, it's, it's a sample, uh, so now I changed to leukemia subtype. So that, that is where you control what is shown here. Then coloring. Uh, a lot of the same options so if I now select then I color according to Q value here uh, but then I can also color the samples and then I can if I have many annotations I can color all of them then we have the ordering aspect where you can order so now I have according to hierarchical clustering in that dimension I can change it so I can also color according to leukemia subtype or maybe the one in CCCR that we used before and if I would like to see all my samples I can do that and then you see I've ordered according to that annotation and it is then displayed there. If I change my color it is updated. Um, if I now um, click on the plot, uh, I should have move here. So I click on, on these labels, the plot settings will pop up. And then there are a number of controls. Yeah, background foreground that you recognize, but there are two new ones here, uh, horizontal font and vertical font. And, and that controls the scale. So of those pixels here that are selected for row, how much it should it be for the text? And, and that is again a way for uh, to give you the options to uh, generate a plot that looks nice in the scale that you would like it. And depending the, on the length of, of the annotation you are using and so on. So uh, unfortunately there has to be some sort of manual aspect to this, otherwise it, there are so many different options that you can have, and but you have the, the freedom to control it here. And you can change the scale then, uh, or, or if you want the same way, um, x-axis and y-axis, not so much for this plot, we'll show you more about that later. Then if we look at exporting uh, the plot. Webinar. So I will see here. Uh, we have uh, the option to export plots and 
fairly new. Uh, copy to clipboard. You just right click, uh, or you can go file, copy to clipboard. And if I would like to add it here, and then you have something that you can paste into a report, uh, PowerPoint, Word, whatever, LibreOffice, Google Docs, whatever you prefer to work with. Uh, and then you can also get the legend. There is the, there's the legend of, of that scale. So that, that has uh, been made much easier to do that type of quick export. And then the principle for the clipboard export is that what you see is what you get. Uh, but when you export to a file, you have much more freedom. So let's do that, export image. And uh, take the test here. And then if you look at this drop down, you have a number of options. So it can be PNG, JPEG, bitmap, TIFF, and uh, PDF. And more or less the same controls. It's just that it gives you a different type of output form. So we can select the test here. And if we then look at this export, uh, you have two options, export the entire plot or export the uh, visible in the window. So um, this option is similar to the clipboard option, but if you select export entire plot, we will bring uh, also the parts down here. Uh, if you scroll that you don't, can't see and, and export that for you, you can get the color legend. And we provide you with an estimate of uh, the size the, and the size is then based on this size and the relation with, between the blocks on, on your screen. So try to keep uh, all um, the proportions as much as possible, but also then give you the whole uh, sheet. DPI dot per inch is the measurement on uh, how many pick yeah, uh, the resolution of, of an image and uh, typically for print uh, you, you need, need maybe 150 and upwards depending on the requirement uh, for uh, for how you're going to print it and but of course it's related and the number of pixels that you need is related to the size so we, we give you one example so if you're going to have it on an A4 or like letter size then you will get 180 dpi with these many pixels for the plot but then if you really need a high resolution you can just move this slider and we will export a larger picture for you in, in terms of, of number of pixels yeah and then you just press ok so very, very straightforward um, and i think that i have covered um, that so let's move to a new plot type so i can show you a little bit better oh, i take a volcano plot and and i need a statistical test for that a two group comparison uh, and i need some uh, i need some variables um Again, then, if we go to the view tab here, I will. You will see that the controls are changed a little bit. Um, we can, of course, color uh, in in different ways. Uh, for the variables, um, but I also then for all what we call the 2D plots, which is basically not the heat map and not the PCA plots. You have now the option to have different type of uh, uh, symbols in, in the data set here, uh, in the plot, so that you control from here. 
then if you would like to control axis uh, you, you double click it and get the highlight like this so on the x-axis then we can control the, what it should say uh, this is a webinar and then you will see that down here and you have the option then to make that much bigger if you like of course and then everything is adjusted so that works fine the axis labels on that axis you can have them or not and you can change and you can change angle here so a, a lot of options to to make that configurable in in uh, the ways that you prefer um, similar on the x-axis uh, how, how, how close should the ticks be uh, as much as possible to make it uh, uh, look nice for you. Title, you don't like the that title, then you are here and we can enter webinar. So that is controlled from here. All through this, uh, you know, you can have new plots of different kinds, uh, tables, you can have uh, more plots, and uh, you need to have something on the axis. I'm, I'm just setting stuff, stuff up here because I'm going to show you uh, something. Okay. So we have a number of different plots open now uh, that I've configured. And how do you know and find all your open plots? That you have uh, help with here in the log tab. So then you can see I have uh, uh, this data set called webinar and I have five different plots open. So, and, and they are always presented here. And if I have multiple data sets, you will see that too. And you can control and close your plots from here and you can create synchronized plots from here. So if I don't want my table any longer, I can just close it. So to summarize, um, if we take uh, a PCA plot here, you control sample annotation and coloring of the sample annotations here. Uh, you get the information about what you have done and you can also control uh, what annotations you have here for details in the plot, uh, how thick lines are going to be and so on and so on. You have the plot settings here and you reach that either by clicking in, in the plot or selecting it from here. For the heat map, you have much more options. One of the important ones is uh, the uh, setting of how uh, large the squares of the data points shall be, and of course, how you order it uh, in, in different uh, ways. Um, then for the 2D plots, you get uh, a lot of help in, in setting the, those up uh, by just double clicking in the elements that you would like to change. So the titles and, and uh, stuff like that. And everything can be exported. I showed you the user interface for that. You can also copy to clipboard just by right clicking or, um, or using the file menu, copy to clipboard and legend and so on. So a lot of flexibility, not oh, only to the, uh, uh, to uh, configure the plots, but also to get them out of the program and into the um, uh, your downstream uh, efforts. So I will. That is actually my last uh, comment here, and and the last thing that I plan to show for you. And with that, I will. Uh, See if I can. Uh, so, if you have questions, um, feel free to uh, um, chat with me, and I will try to answer that and show you. 
or otherwise I will just say thank you very much for listening today and, and it's been a pleasure to to, uh, to have this webinar and, and I wish you all a good day. Okay, no questions so far. So thank you very much. And, and uh, again, I wish you a really good day and uh, feel free to reach out in, to us in, in uh, other channels. Bye for now.